And good afternoon, everybody. I hope you are keeping well on this uh, miserable day where I am at the moment in Donegal. It is lashing out of the heavens. Um, I hope you can hear me because oh, I seem to be having problems with the connection to Anne. So if you can hear me, can you just, will you pop a comment in and just let me know that uh, the sound is coming across okay, if you wouldn't mind. And I see your comment here on the screen. I'm trying to get Anne back on. I don't know what's wrong. It could be just that the weather is so bad, the connection, unfortunately, has let us down, which is really, really unusual. Um, but unfortunately, I, I can't do anything about that. So I'm just going to hang on a second and see. I can see Anne's screen is there at the bottom, but I am just hoping that her, thank you, Francis, thank you so much. And there is Anne. I'm gonna click her into the stream. Great. Anne, can you hear me okay? I hear you perfectly, yep. Brilliant, we are a <laughs> go for today, fantastic. Um, Anne, I tell you, do you know what? Um, well, first of all, at Room Junkie, interior designer, Anne Tui, you are so, so welcome to today's webcast. And to be honest with you, I mean, the thing is, we are stuck in our homes now so much. And I kind of said, right, I need somebody to come on and tell us, how can we cheer ourselves up in our homes at the moment? And there's a couple of little things I know about you. And one is windowsills. <laughs> I, because I, I watch your stream as well, and we'll be announcing that afterwards. But one is windowsills, and two is cushions. So where, where do we start, Anne? I mean, it's miserable weather. It's lockdown. We need to cheer ourselves up in the house. Well, yeah, and this is different to the previous lockdown because we could get outside. The sun was shining. We were. It was new. This is boring, this is dull, everybody's mood is down, I think energy is down. Now, speaking of energy, if you have the energy to go and paint a room in your house, it's probably a really good thing to do, and you can still get paints. Um, the paint shops are all open. And, and I have to say, that is a plus. Absolutely. That is a plus. It is, on two levels, because it's something positive to do as well, and something practical and actionable <laughs> that you can do. But I would say to people, if you're picking your colors, Choose your colour carefully. Now is not the time for deep, dark aubergines and blacky navies and things like that. Go Colour Trend have the most beautiful new range. Irish company, they launched last month, I think, fabulous range of lovely, soft, warm, light, reflective colours that you'll get anywhere. That would raise your mood. And if you don't feel like doing that, or maybe you did the painting in the previous lockdown, um, I think you want to raise the energy in your home. And it is little things like cushions and art. Um, yesterday I talked about doing a gallery wall, how to do a gallery wall on my um, 3 p.m. live. And today I'm doing one on how to do pictures up your stairs. Because now too is the time to get rid of anything in your life or your home that causes you negative association maybe a gift from somebody you don't like a picture of somebody you don't like um or something that reminds you of a time in your life when you weren't happy or you were sick or you know whatever so be mindful of this and try only to have the positives in your house pictures of your children laughing holiday pictures to remind us that we have holidays again um and color yeah the cushions the art the accessories and like just candles. yeah actually because one thing with the pictures is and you always have that a fab photo and art behind you when you're talking i have to say i love really nice art myself but when it comes yeah. to frames would you yep. have would you use um various frames you know in a group or would you keep a grouping with one type of frame Funny, I was asked this question yesterday by a girl that I went to boarding school a few years ago. Um, and it depends on the style of your house. If your house is more traditional, um, maybe you've got an eclectic theme going on, you can certainly do a match of frames. Um, if you've got a more contemporary home, I think I would stick to paint them white or black or gray. And you can always paint your existing frames anyway. It doesn't matter if the texture of the frame is different. If the color is right, that sort of unifies everything. Um, and there's a lot you can do. You can even shop your house as well. Look around, and I take art and move art all around the house. Say you've got a beautiful picture somewhere in a room you don't use, a dining room or something, take it into yeah. your living room and enjoy it, you know? Yeah, no, that's definitely, I mean, art should be enjoyed and it should be somewhere where you can see it and sit back and savour it and really, really, you know, because art creates so many memories. 
oh, and it always triggers something yeah you um, know I think what Marie Kondo got that one right you know it does trigger joy actually I've been doing a promotion because I've been promoting lots of small artist makers Irish local people and Arlene Harris's mom Sheila O'Byrne has taken up painting after ages of five decades and she's wow. creating an amazing art and it's actually quite inexpensive because I suppose the galleries are not getting their cuts the artist is selling the art directly and it's a win-win for everybody so I think that that's time to, for local people Christmas presents yeah yeah and actually funny and art if people look they think oh well that's you know that's a one-off you know sometimes it's not actually as dear as you think it is going to be and you can get beautiful uh small pieces you know within a budget you know sometimes we've just lost your sound there for a second and i hope it's not my wi-fi it has been a bit problematic of late oh there's no problem but the other thing is when it comes to homes because i was now we're uh renting at the moment because we're in the middle of a build and um there's one thing that i look at is some of the colors that are in the room and i kind of think gosh that's a very heavy color for a small room or that's even though or that's a very heavy color for a big room so do you look at a room size or do you already have a color in mind when you're going in somewhere how, how do you um gauge a room when you walk in when you're about to put a color on it i wouldn't get too fixated on the size of the room but one thing i do do and i urge everybody to do this because if you do this you'll never make a mistake with paint again if you've got curtains in the room if you've got cushions Take that as your inspiration and take that fabric is going to have a lighter tone in the background or maybe a lighter tone going through it. If you match your paint color to that color, whether it's a tone darker or a tone lighter, it doesn't matter, but you'll get this flow that works. It absolutely works. Most people go and pick a paint color and then they don't know what to do with it. Whereas yeah. if you pick your piece first and you know your fabrics, it's so easy, fall in love with the fabric. And even if it's a cushion, sometimes now with the more contemporary homes that I'm designing, there aren't putting curtains on the windows. So we'll go with maybe curtains yeah. or cushions. Yeah. 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 That, now, and it's funny you mentioned that because I was watching um Dermot Bannon's uh, Fabulous Homes or whatever it's it's called there the other yeah. night. Actually. Yeah. Sing. And of course, Twitter is my companion for programs like that. And one of the things that I noticed, and it was said on Twitter too, is that are people not using curtains anymore? Is this an age thing? Am I that old that I have to have curtains? Or what is it? I don't think it's an age thing. I think it's architecture has changed. The architecture landscape of Ireland has changed. We are more and more people are building contemporary homes. I'm going to build again and I will build a steel and glass box. I know that. And I think the windows are bigger and they're architecturally shaped as well. They're beautiful. They've got dark frames. So what I often do with those is I will actually match a roller blind to the RAL color of the window, have it recessed so you don't see it or, um, or sitting on the window. So the window is a feature. And then I have, I, I always put um, power in for a blind in a big window so that you can have a motorized blind because they come down in price enormously um and then you take in the energy with lots of color on the walls art on the walls you know soft furnishings maybe a funky colored chair um lots of ways that you can do it you'll still have a ho home with soul and i love my fabrics barbara but i find yeah less and less in bedrooms yes i'm still doing curtains and roman lines absolutely but in on the big big architectural windows not so much no yeah, and I have to say you're right there. When you when you drive around now and you see the more modern design houses, they do have these fabulous and you know you've corner angled windows, That's nearly right. cathedral like, yeah. coming into houses. You know, and they're just stunning. And more importantly, too, architects are using orientation, so those windows will always face south or west. So you have all that solar gain and all that beautiful light. Um, but the window becomes a feature. And to be honest, I would urge anybody, if you've got curtains that are blocking your windows a little bit at the minute, I'd try and pull them back. It might be autumn now, but the more light that you can get into your house, the more it will actually improve your mood. And even lighting, artificial lighting, layer your lighting, don't just have a pendant above you, have lamps, have a, you know, have table lamps, have a standard lamp, because this creates coziness and, and, and good karma. Light the fire, yeah. uh, light your candles. This will all help to put you in a better a better mood in a better space and actually that's what just as you mentioned the fire i'm just thinking because they don't do we don't get open fires anymore when we build that's the great thing about the stove i think because you don't get as much dust 
then back into the room because you're burning in a stove. And like, remember the open fire and there's the ash and there's the coal and it's it seems to be constantly generating and you find it everywhere. But you mentioned another word there called layers. Now, when it comes to fabrics, some people just kind of want to stay safe and they say, well, I have a floral curtain, so I'll have, you know, a floral cushion and I'll have a floral throw. And But you can actually do so much more because don't be afraid to layer, really, isn't it? Layering is all about, you know, I think Scandinavians got this right. Texture, you can layer with texture, doesn't just have to be colour. So you could have a mohair throw. You could have one of our fabulous Donegal, Studio Donegal or Eddie Doherty tweeds and this sounds old-fashioned if anybody hasn't seen Donegal tweed in a while they've got the most wonderful vibrant contemporary colors and they're beautiful they have you can you know velvets as well there's lots of velvets out at the minute pile it on layer up your textures layer up your color um oh don't disappear on me and hopefully you're, ba you're back it's a you're back room, really yeah we lost you there just for a second um to on layering some of the fabrics but it's true because you can have like say uh, a plaid with um, a stripe you know and a floral with a plain once you're kind of picking up the different tones yeah and it's really effective uh and, and that's what will add lovely character and energy to your room and don't be afraid of color color in the accents i always do that i try to keep my big ticket items like the sofas um neutral uh the walls fairly neutral and then take in the color bold color vibrant color yeah and what cushion covers so because we're talking as well about being on a budget today so instead of always having cook because i know people who would have they've got all their christmas cushions and all their christmas stuff and it's all packed away every year but actually if it was just the covers it's even cheaper again if you're just changing cushion covers and things like that and one little tip, if you're putting a filler into a cushion, make sure the filler is two inches bigger than the cushion cover because it makes a much more luxurious cushion. So you can have a cheap cushion, but make it look fabulous just by doing that. I'm looking here, I have a comment. Um, get rid of, it. I'll put it up here now from Esther. Get rid of things now because no one will be in your home to see it's not there anymore. Well, do you know what? And That's super. I would get rid of them anyway, whether they're coming in or not. Absolutely. That's a great comment. That is a great comment. Um, you want it. If it doesn't spark joy and make you happy, or that, yeah. So Sharon is saying, love that as it's easy to change up the small ticket items. Yeah, and that's absolutely. exactly it. Now, colour, and because it is a big thing, I love colour. I mean, I know you a long time and we've had conversations before and I'm not afraid of colour. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people still are. Um, so would you, there's a couple of things in that is one, how can people kind of step out of that, uh, maybe not to be afraid of colour? And two, would you mix two colours in a room? Oh, I would. I'd mix a couple of colours. I would say yeah. pick colours you like. And the accent colours that you'll find in the shops at the moment, even the chain shops um, are online, you know, the bright orange, the fuchsia pink, um, lime greens, there's lovely mustards, there's navy. And these colours all work well together on a neutral base. I would say Voyage, you know the, the, the company Voyage, Voyage Maison, their stuff is gorgeous, really good quality, pretty affordable and lovely, lovely colour. And what you could do is buy one, voyage cushions you know have a flamboyance um and pick up some plain colors to complement that uh, and you'll get a gorgeous look without spending very much money and that's the thing and it is about keeping it on a budget so okay so we now need to we need to clear our clutter okay we've actually gone in reverse here because we started decorating before we cleared the clutter we actually need what kind of things you know where do you start because we're with the office in the sitting room or the bedroom now at the moment, mm -hmm. you know, so for people who are tripping over themselves and, and I know it's so easy happens. You don't see yourself putting the bits down here, there and everywhere. The home office say in the sitting room or the bedroom, what tips would you give to somebody out there for that? 
Okay, funny enough, I'd start with a kitchen, Barbara, um, because there's no sentimentality involved in your kitchen. So if even if you took a couple of cupboards, a couple of drawers, and I tell my girls, because I have a declutter club, to go in 20 minute bursts, set the timer for 20 minutes on your phone, and it always becomes a competition against you and the timer, and it's amazing what you will get done. Um, so if you start there, it gets you into the habit of it. Bedroom and clothes is hard, very, very difficult. Um, what I usually see is get three boxes or three bags, label them. One is for keep, one is for discard, and the other is donate. So if you can, the, 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 what am I trying to say? The throwaway bag is easy because if something's worn or, you know, it's you know it's not going to be of any use to you or anybody else it's kind of the will i fit back into that again at some point not thing that. You know that. <laughs> and i think you have to be ruthless and say have i worn this in the last six months or have i worn it in the last year and if you haven't you're not going to wear it again so if you give it to somebody who'll enjoy it or get rid of it it's as simple as that and the more you do it actually the more you get into it and the more ruthless you become like we moved house last year we sold our house last year and moved um, to downsize so we filled five skips barbara um uh, turn shop took 10 loads of things and i sold things as well and i have never felt better it's like a weight on my shoulders it's just amazing amazing it and is I never that, that sensation ever. that's it exactly you do get that sensation that you've lifted a load out of your house because and oh, until you like start you don't realize what it is you're hanging on to. And funnily, I did that myself recently, as I said, because we're renting at the moment. We've had seven house moves over the years. So and I couldn't believe that there was still some stuff that had actually still managed to find its way along. So you had paid somebody I, to move that from one house to the other, you know? clutter rubbish I, um, and this yeah. is the thing and yeah. you don't think that and that's it exactly i think eight bags went down to the charity shop brilliant, brilliant. like um, from the not just brilliant. mine like this is from all the family <laughs> but eight I bags that's fantastic it's, uh, but it's such a good feeling and you know the crazy thing is we were ruthless this time last year i miss don't miss anything i actually don't miss one thing uh, where i haven't hankered back to anything uh, and the volume that we got rid of was enormous, you know. I um, heard somewhere somebody saying, if you haven't looked for it in something like three or four months, yes, then you don't actually need it. That's uh, absolutely. absolutely. And, and that's kind of how you get rid of it. There's lots of little tips. And in fact, if you um, say you're not sure about something in your wardrobe, put it back in the hanger and turn the hanger the opposite way to the rest of the hangers and look at it again in three months time. I guarantee it hasn't been touched. So then you let it go. Sometimes right. Oh, well, I, I, yeah. I think I'll have a, a, another bit of a job to do on my on my wardrobe. So you know, I I still have a few of those bits of. I will get back into that, won't I? You know, I will. But so mixing colors. It was the the one of the colors that was so popular over the last couple of years was gray. <clears throat> And I found that kind of everywhere I looked and you're looking for inspiration for doing things. And all I kept seeing was gray. What other colors? Now, I know as many shades of green there are, there's probably double the amount of grays. But what kind of colors, say, in the kitchen would you be putting if there was a gray on the wall and maybe white units or something? What other colors would you put in with that? Just to boost. To boost, and you do need to boost. That's the secret of it. Gray <coughs> don't is, is exceptional. My best successes have no doubt have been with colour gray. Um, but you do need strong colour to punctuate the gray. Otherwise, it can be bland and cold. And particularly, you can't really put gray, when well, you can put gray into a north facing space, you need to be careful what colour you put in. Some will go green, some will go icy blue, some will go lilac. But the stronger colours, like the fuchsias, navy is good, um, orange, um, group the greens there's tons and the velvets are really really good and, and then to get a bit of color as well in the um, pattern fabric big art on the wall plenty of color a rug with color in it uh it just lifts the gray but i think the gray i think the gray is here to stay um uh, maybe in different ways but you must layer it up and you must add color to it otherwise it, it will be cold and so so for somebody starting out then and there's uh, like it's their first time to paint or yeah. to do the rooms would you say okay so stay simple on the surround and use the pop of color and whatnot in it's the accessory because it's easier changed or would you start there 
I, I would actually, um, and to be honest, but you can still, I mean, have I done dark rooms? I did a navy snug recently, it's a TV room, um, paint, painted in a fireball navy with white woodwork, um, but that's going to be used at night time with a big screen only. Um, and I mean, if colour's your thing, use it. Or, you know, I think the accent wall is a bit gone, but at the same time, if you still, if you want to have an accent wall, go ahead and do it. I think the only rule of interior design is there are no rules, really. You kind of make it up as yeah. you go along. But I think the greys, if you're using grey, the most important friend is your compass. Get the compass app on your phone. If you've got a south facing space or a west facing space, space there are so many colours that you can use. North facing is a bit more challenging. I actually did a video called Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, that explains all of that so that you'll never make a mistake with grey or even maybe start with your accents pick your cushions first which might seem crazy and then get a colour to complement that and to the kitchens actually a lot of people did the navy island greens are very popular in kitchens at the moment now that's my favourite colour I love green always loved green and there are so even many sludgy dark greens and they're beautiful yeah that lovely warm because I I find well I find green and those new tones that are out really kind of rich. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if, if anybody who hasn't seen the new color trend contemporary collection, I would urge you to pick it up. They are just even their neutral tones, their grayish are just so warm. Um, I've used a lot of them in living rooms and bedrooms, and it's only just been released, but already I've used quite a few. Uh, really beautiful, and the color trend paint you can wash it. You wipe it down and it's light reflective as well so it's um it's a great paint and even if you're painting yourself it goes on like custard and the painters love it for that reason i love the faro and ball colors as well but it's a harder paint to use yeah yeah uh, would you so the color trend and the paints and i've used them myself would you then would you recommend getting a color wheel i think the color wheel for somebody to use one when they're trying to match up what it is they're using I don't think so. I mean, I was taught obviously to use a colour wheel way back in the day. But I think then we used a lot more saturated colours. We use reds on the walls and deep yellows and deeper colours. I think you're better off with um, the fan deck or even just the um, their colour card. And for companies like Little Green and Far On Ball and Colour Trend, you can actually, the paint swatches on the swatch are actual paint samples. They're not photocopies of a photocopy. And mm. you can an A3 sample as well and take it home with you and sorry A5 the smaller size and take it home and look at it at night time look at it at daytime so that you can really get to know that paint before you buy it all right I didn't realize you could buy it on the on a bigger you can even have them sent the color trend ones I think they'll even post it out to you but it's a very handy thing to do because sometimes with the lighter colors if you have a lot of light coming into your room yeah and it won't fall too much, so you might need to go quite, you know, up, up a good few tones. Um, but color trend make it easy. And in fact, I noticed when I was picking up swatches the other day, I they have a little card, like a little information card, and they have put colors together and room sets together. So if you really were a rookie starting off, I thought what a clever thing to give you a bit of inspiration. And the actual paints were there and what works with what, because you should consider flow in your house too. Don't randomly pick colors for each room. They need to flow together and that creates harmony and sort of contentment in your house as well. Yeah, that and I've seen that with some and some of the work that you've done that you have shown, and you see where you walk through and it picks up from one to the other. And it might even only be something small, but it's pulling in one one That's room right. into the other. But Always. just back back on the paint thing, sorry, because I just had a thought. <laughs> sorry. And to all everybody watching out there, I'm only asking these questions for me. OK, <laughs> I'm learning so much here from man, too. But you know, when you get the card, yeah. OK, and it, you have all the shades of paint, say, on it, mm -hmm. the colours on it. Are they complementary or just various shades of that tone? OK, they're usually various shades of that tone. But if you notice, uh, gosh, and I have all those cards downstairs, if I don't actually have brought them with me, um, you if you look crossways, there will be different colors. Um, and they, sorry, a message just came through that that's just distracting me. So you've got your toning colors going down vertically, but then horizontally, there will be colors that will be of a similar level that will certainly be complementary colors and will work with that. Yeah. Ah, and, yeah. brilliant. And the historic collection actually from Color Trend, some beautiful colors as well. Absolutely lovely, lovely colors. But the beauty is you can actually get the swatch. So you pay two euro and you don't make a mistake. 
Now, the thing is, and you have a masterclass coming up and we I are do. going to put the link in the comments oh. below. And what, now I couldn't put the link across here, unfortunately, but it will go into the comments underneath. What kind of things will you be covering in your masterclass for anybody that wants to sign up? Okay, gosh, I'm actually going to be covering pretty much everything. This is the masterclass that historically and traditionally I would go from Dublin to Cork to Donegal to Sligo and present to a room full of people over maybe four hours. So I start with how to, and it's funny because of COVID and everything, I've actually added, because there are other things that I think we need that we might have needed back then. I, um, I'll help you how to find your own style. Um, that's really, really important. I'll do, gosh, I don't have the schedule with me, but I will do things like how you pick colors, how you pick your fabrics, how you furnish your room, how you get the right furnishing plan for your room and the right size furniture for your room. I'll cover layout, I'll cover lighting because I'm passionate about lighting. Most people get their lights so wrong and it's so easy to get it right. And quite a few of the girls who have joined up are actually building or in the middle of building, so that's very good for them. Um, I actually show you how to finish a room, how to stage it, how to accessorize it. Lots of secrets that I've sort of learned a lot. I have a system. Every design that I've ever done, I have a system that I've realized I use from start to finish, um, step by step, whether it's a tiny little pod up in Donegal or a 5,000 square foot house down the country, it doesn't matter. The way I approach it and the way I do it is exactly the same so that you get a perfect result at the end and you don't waste any money. So I, I'm very excited about this. And there's a lovely bunch. I can already, I can just tell that we're going to have a like-minded group of people and I will have a, there's a private Facebook page as well, which I never had for the re traditional masterclasses because I wanted to have backup and accountability and people don't, you know, they can ask questions there. But I think, yeah, getting that step by step is really important, you know, and also knowing that you're going to be with others who are in the same boat as you and right. that no question is a silly question because no, you can be sure that somebody else is thinking the same thing as well when they're doing their room. Um, I can't, I could go on and on and on. We have just gone way, way over time here, but your own um, Facebook lives are at three o'clock every day, isn't it? Every day. Absolutely. Started on a whim during lockdown and I'm going to keep them up because I've enjoyed them so much. Lots of people are getting good buzz out of them. So. Oh, but sure, look at Here's your son. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and we both started around the same time um, at the beginning of the first lockdown and that. And isn't it just amazing at the what it has done for we're just online and how we've had to change and turn around. True. At the kitchen, I mean, mine are from the kitchen table. I have been on the Elaine show doing the last live at the end when we came out of lockdown last time. I've been on News Talk on the home show. I've been on Jennifer Zamparelli's show, all because of the Facebook lives. It's, yeah. you know, the interaction and the engagement that we're having and communities have been built and you're doing exactly the same and it's fantastic. It really and is. this is it. And yeah. thank you so much. I, I was going to touch on the size of furniture and everything like what you did, but... Uh, uh, look at sign up for her masterclass you'll get it all you'll get all your answers in there you know, and go over to Rural Junkie. Right. people think that we have to they have to start next tuesday they don't it's a dip in dip out course you have it forever so you could even get it as a christmas present for somebody it's you know it's it's not oh as, lovely that's lovely esther are you listening um <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it is. It's brilliant. And there was so much that we could have done. And at Room Junkie on Facebook, three o'clock today, um, every day, uh, yeah. find Anne. And she is going through all her tips, her guides, answering questions, you name it. She's there. And when it comes to interior design, hop over to Anne. So, Anne, thank you so much for coming on today. I thoroughly enjoyed that. And uh, hopefully, um, I don't think there are any, I see some more comments here, so any, yes, um, Esther is actually in the process of buying a house. I cannot wait to get started decorating. So Esther, hop over at three o'clock every day to Anne and um, she's much better than Pinterest because it's real, it's live and you can talk to her right. face to face. Every, thank you all so much for joining us today and I shall see you next week when we're talking about perfume why you should wear it and your sense of smell and what it will do for you so we'll chat to you then bye thanks barbara that was a pleasure <laughs>